Hello, and thank you for joining us for the Pharmacy Cannabis Lecture Series. Each session is designed to deliver a small and in-depth dose of cannabis education. I'm Candace Haas, and I want to thank all of our viewers for being with us here today, as well as our customers from the Pharmacy Santa Ana, Santa Barbara, Berkeley, and the Pottery in LA for joining us today. I'm really excited about our webinar today, and I know many of you are too. Um, our last webinar on sex and cannabis by far is one of our most popular in the series. So we're very excited to uh, welcome Ashley Monta back with us today. I want to tell you just a little bit about Ashley's bio before I let her start presenting. Ashley is an award-winning sex educator and coach. She began her career after completing the body certification course um, as a body sex facilitator and studying with legendary sex pioneer Betty Dodson, which is super cool. <laughs> um, Ashley has become one of the most sought after authorities on mindfully combining sex and cannabis as part of her canisexual brand. She is the author of the CBD Solution to Sex, published in conjunction with Mary Jane Magazine and Chronicle Books. She also writes for Playboy as a Playboy advisor, as well as written for Culture and Dope magazines. In 2021, she created the Activate Your Cosmic Pussy, an online erotic empowerment and sex magic intensive for women. She was also awarded the 2020 XBiz Award for Sexpert of the Year and is featured expert on Viceland's TV Stone Sex episode of Slut Ever, which was really cool. I love that episode. She's also a current brand ambassador for Sibian. With that, I'm very, very excited to have my friend and colleague in the drug policy reform community, Ashley, with us today. Thank you so much, Ashley. Thank you so much, Candace, and welcome, everyone. I am honored to be here presenting again. I love working with pharmacy and the amazing work that they do and the incredible products that they carry. I was lucky enough to be at the shop a few days ago in Santa Ana, and I'm just in awe of of the incredible selection and super fresh flower and just like high standards uh by which they curate their offerings so oh, thank you <laughs> yes my pleasure so and hopefully your pleasure too today we are going to be talking about cannabis and cosmic intimacy what does that mean well there's only one way to find out <laughs> <laughs> and i want to start with just talking about cannabis for those who are maybe new to cannabis consumption and want to kind of dip their toe in the pool let's let's go over some basics so that will look like a little cannabis quickie <laughs> <laughs> first thing that you need to know um, that is going to make you sound like a very informed consumer is that um, when you are talking about the different cannabis varietals, um, you'll want to use the terminology strains or even more preferably cultivars, um, not strands. <laughs> I've, I've heard that said so many times and, and everyone in the cannabis industry sort of internally cringes. So that's just like a good way to know uh, that you're savvy. And those refer to the different, like I said, varietals. So the genetics of the plant and what its parents are which lead me to the next important thing I want to share with all of you, which is that indica and sativa are complete hogwash. Um, I know so many people who have said like, oh, I only smoke sativas because indicas knock me out or, oh, I only smoke indicas because sativas make me anxious. Um, the truth is that the uh, indica and sativa refer to the morphology of the leaf, what the shape of the leaf looks like. They're both cannabis and um, every strain that is out there right now has been so hybridized that there are almost no true indicas or sativas anymore. It's sort of a shorthand um, that is sort of held over from the illicit market days where you had someone who was not a dispensary who was kind of reaching into their pocket and saying, well, this makes you buzzy, so we're going to call that sativa, and this makes you sleepy, and we're going to call that indica. And so just know going in that you don't want to use those as your entire source of how you think that that's going to make you feel. Um, the really the reality is that it's so different from person to person, and it really is impacted by mindset and setting. It's impacted by your personal body chemistry, what you ate that day, all of these factors 
go into that. And so really the, the opportunity here is to try something and see how it makes you feel. And in fact, if you can smell it um, at some places, you can, some places you can't, the law is getting really complicated about that these days, but your nose kind of knows in a way mm -hmm. that is helpful. <laughs> So make sure that you just see what smells good to you and then try just a little bit, just, just a smidge, notice how you feel and then go from there and write it down. Because if you're anything like me, uh, cannabis really negatively impacts my short term memory. And so I keep a log of, I tried this, I got this strain from this grower. I smoked this much. I noticed the onset in this much time. And these were the things that I felt in my body. That makes a huge difference. Uh, Dr. Ethan Russo, if you want to read more about the Indica Sativa myth, uh, can, can share more about that. Really quick, we're going to go through cannabinoids. Uh, what are cannabinoids? Cannabinoids are the compounds in cannabis that impact effects. The ones that you are probably most familiar with are THC and CBD. There are actually over 100 different cannabinoids that have been isolated thus far. And so we're just going to go through a couple of the top ones. And they include, of course, THC, the one that everyone has heard of. And even that, though, breaks down into categories. So there's THCA, which is uh, when I pick up a, a plant that is growing cannabis and I pick a bud off of this amazing plant in its raw form before I have done anything to it or applied heat in any way, it is in the THCA form. It's an mm -hmm. acid form of the, the um, cannabinoid. And when you apply heat to it, the acid drops away. Uh, there's a process called decarboxylation. Little, little chemistry lesson for you. <laughs> <laughs> the carboxyl group is taken away and it becomes delta 9 THC. And that is the one that is the intoxicating cannabinoid at least the most intoxicating cannabinoid, uh, depending on how you consume it. However, if you consume THCA in its raw form, you are very unlikely to get high, which is useful to know. So for tinctures and things like that. There's also Delta-8 THC. You may have seen that sort of all over the place in the last few years. That's becoming a lot more popular because it's not technically illegal there's there's a very gray area legally with with delta 8 thc and it's often derived from hemp which is also cannabis hemp is cannabis cannabis is hemp hemp is just a legal designation that means it has less than 0.3 percent thc in it and so delta 8 doesn't count toward that percentage so somehow that's created a loophole and it is still somewhat intoxicating so be aware that if you're doing delta 8 that's still going to impact you so start low, go slow and see how you feel. But that is a really great option for folks, especially who live in um, prohibition states. Mm -hmm. You're also going to see um, in, in the world THCV. Uh, people have called it, which I don't love this term, but they called it like diet weed because it's an appetite <laughs> suppressant. Diets are bullshit. Your body is amazing just the way it is. We're just going to start with that. <laughs> um, but it does suppress appetite in a way that uh, regular Delta 9 THC can sometimes enhance appetite. People have ever gotten the munchies. So, <laughs> so just be aware that if you find something with THCV, it tends to be a little bit more stimulating and it will have those appetite suppression effects. Um, there's also 11 hydroxy THC, which when you consume Delta 9 in your stomach in, as it goes through your um, liver and, and goes through your first, first pass metabolism, it is converted from Delta-9 into 11-hydroxy-THC. This is a much more body-heavy, sedate version of THC. Mm -hmm. It also lasts a lot longer. So the high that you get from edibles is going to be very different than the high that you get from um, inhaling, either smoking, vaping, or dabbing. So be aware of that when you are considering making the jump into edibles. If you are typically um, a smoker or a vapor, it's gonna be a different experience. So start impossibly low. Um, the laws in California require people to do uh, 10 milligrams doses and in, in pre-dosed packaging for edibles. I would say start with a quarter of that. Mm -hmm. Cut it in half, cut it in half again. Start with like two and a half milligrams, wait 
at least two full hours, really closer to three, because that's how long it really takes to start to kick in. And then know that that high is gonna last between four and six hours. So edibles are a time commitment. Just want, I wanna give you the information so that you can make really informed choices when you go to a dispensary and when you're choosing what you want to consume. Um, the next can, ah, <laughs> words, words are hard. Um, the <laughs> next cannabinoid, that is really um, popular and that you hear a lot about, including in the title of my book, The CBD Solution, is CBD, cannabidiol. And that is a very cool cannabinoid. It's what my friend Chelsea Sabara calls a slutty cannabinoid because it has weak action at a number of superficial receptors. <laughs> and um, it is not the, the panacea that I think the media has made it out to be. It is helpful. It does have anti-inflammatory properties, but it is really best in conjunction with other cannabinoids. Mm -hmm. So you're going to want to look for products that have both THC and CBD. CBD in isolation is mildly to moderately helpful, but not nearly as helpful as it is, it is uh, when it gets to take advantage of the entourage effect, which is more cannabinoids are better. There are also you know, CBG, CBN, Lots of things. If you want to get nerdy, leafly.com is a great resource for learning all about cannabinoids. And of course, the pharmacy cannabis lecture series. <laughs> Couple of different options for consumption. As I mentioned, inhalation, edibles, and then there's genital topicals and other topicals. And I'll explain in a second why I split those into two categories. So inhalation is the most direct and an efficient method of with a quick onset time when you smoke or vape you've got between five and 15 minutes before you feel the effects so it's a lot easier to titrate your consumption and figure out oh okay i did one puff i feel really good that's as much as i need to do and if you don't feel like you are where you want to be you can take another and then wait and see how it feels and so that's something that's really really good to do and when you're mixing it with intimacy because you can pinpoint exactly how you want to feel and, and get there in an incremental fashion, which I think is very useful when you are mindfully combining sex and cannabis. You can do that prior to, during, or even after sexy fun times. Just remember, and you will hear me say this multiple times tonight, negotiate before you medicate. You are going to want to have a conversation about consent, boundaries, desires, what's on the table, what's off the table, what you want to co-create that particular evening. That is going to save you so much emotional paperwork down the line. And it's just good practice. And, and it sets you up to be a really thoughtful lover. So I love that. <laughs> yes. Negotiate before you medicate. Write it on your refrigerator. <laughs> Next, um, edibles are a very popular consumption option. They take, as I mentioned, two to four hours to kick in, which makes them a little bit tricky for intimacy, because even if you both take the edible at the same time, one might hit faster than the other, and you don't quite know when you're going to be in that sexy zone in that four to six hour window. So edibles, I would say, are for really advanced users. If you are brand new to cannabis, especially brand new to sex and cannabis, edibles would be one that I would save for way down the line once you feel quite comfortable with your tolerance and your awareness of the effects. Genital topicals like Weed Lube, um, one of my favorite brands that is actually carried at pharmacy is called Quim and they are a women-owned brand, love supporting women-owned brands, <laughs> super, super awesome. And they have both THC and CBD in their formula. They also add um, tea tree oil and Damiana. So they have some like herbal upgrades to their blend. And they are really formulating this product with vulva health in mind. Not all genital topicals are created equal. Some of the ones on the market, especially the CBD only ones, can have a lot of ingredients that I would consider superfluous and potentially irritating to the vulva. Mm -hmm. So you want to be a really savvy consumer and, and do some research on what kinds of, of products are going to be most friendly to vulvas. And the deal with genital topicals is that uh, it takes about 20 to 30 minutes to marinate once you apply it. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get into anatomy in a second. But in the meantime, here is my vulva 
<laughs> my little vulva puppet Lilith. So you're going to want to put it all over the vulva on the clit and the clitoral hood on the inner labia and all around the vaginal opening and let it marinate. Give it some time so that it can really sink in and do all the yummy things that it's going to do, which we'll get into in a little bit. And that's going to set you up for really yummy sexual experiences. You can also use suppositories vaginally or anally, and those are great uh, vaginally if you have a particularly sensitive cervix and you find deep penetration to be uncomfortable. They're also great uh, for making anal sex more comfortable if that is a thing that is of interest to either you or your partner. So keep suppositories in your back pocket, huh? pun intended, and, uh, <laughs> and know that that is available to you. Also really great for menstrual cramps when used mm -hmm. vaginally or lower back pain when used anally. So they are just, they're really a multi-purpose tool and it's why I like them so much. Other topicals that you would apply to maybe your shoulder or your neck or, you know, a, a spot on your hip that's particularly sore. Those are pretty much immediate onset. Um, one of my favorite brands is Papa and Barkley. My dad actually has two separated shoulders. And so when he and his girlfriend are ready for sexy times, like she rubs them on his shoulders so that he is able to hold himself up during sexy times. Don't ask me why I know that. My dad is a chronic oversharer. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's a really great option. Um, it's a, a way to incorporate, you know, an infused massage as part of your foreplay. And it's also important to read the label because not all things that are meant for your skin are meant for your genitals, which is why I draw that distinction between genital topicals and all other topicals. Let's do a quickie anatomy lesson. Um, just go ahead and comment in the chat if you had what you would consider a comprehensive sex education or abstinence only sex education growing up, because I'm going to tell you some stuff that you probably never heard before. So just Go ahead and and let me know if you are doing if you're working with a lot of, of information or if you're working with like me before I learned sex education, almost no information. So the clit. This is these are any bits. You people with vulvas have these. And a vulva, as I mentioned, is all of the delicious outer bits. Uh, in the words of the Lion King, everything the light touches, Simba, that's the vulva. <laughs> People tend to refer to this whole thing as the vagina, and that is uh, an unfortunate mistake. You would probably not refer to your face as your throat, I hope, but people tend to want to call this whole area the vagina. The vagina, in fact, is only the birth canal, if that's applicable to you, or the place where blood comes out, if that's applicable to you. Everything else is the vulva. And the most important part of the vulva, arguably, is the clitoral complex. Now, why do I say clitoral complex and not just the clit? Because when I say clit, people think of this little cute button at the top that everyone in popular media says is uh, really hard to find, which I don't understand how front and center is hard to find, but I digress. That is not all there is. The clit is an iceberg most of it is below the surface. So while the penis is 90% external, the clit is 90% internal, and it actually has as much erectile tissue as the penis does. So as you'll notice in the diagram, there is the, the clit that you see on the outside, that is the head or the glands of the clit. It goes back into a shaft and then splits down into two legs and then is hugged by these two vestibular bulbs, which line the uh, vaginal opening and the urethra. So if you've ever, if you happen to have a vulva and you've ever felt like kind of swollen after sexy fun times, especially after a really powerful orgasm, and maybe it's even a little bit hard to pee when you go to the bathroom, because we all go to the bathroom afterward. If you don't, <laughs> definitely do that. Um, the reason that it's, it's sort of swollen and hard to pee is because the vestibular bulbs are squeezing your urethra because the clit, like the penis, because it's made of the same tissue, gets an erection. And so that's a really valuable piece of information to have. And that's why genital topicals are so valuable for vulva owners, because it brings more blood flow to the area and more blood flow equals harder, stronger erections, which if you have a penis, you know, tends to feel really good, feels really great for the clit as well. So the power of knowledge, let that just 
go deep into your psyche. Tell everyone you know, I am on a mission to let the world know that the clit has legs. Okay. And as you can see in this diagram, this is kind of the side view. And so this is how it hugs the vaginal opening. So you can see where the fingers are. And it actually goes down um, pretty close to the anal opening. So a lot of people can can indirectly stimulate the clit through anal stimulation as well, if that is interesting to you. Woohoo! This is what it looks like from the front. So this sort of shaded area is all clit. Lots of clitoral real estate. Moving on to the penis. Penises are great. I'm a fan. I like them. Um, circumcised and uncircumcised are equally awesome. Whichever kind you find in the wild, just tell the person <laughs> that owns it that they are great. Um, if you don't come in contact with a lot of uncircumcised penises, don't panic. It's really just like extra fun for everybody. It's a built-in masturbation sleeve. It tends to mean that the head of the penis is more uh, sensitive and it's just a good time. I, I love it when I find foreskin in the wild. It's, it's <laughs> really, really a lot of fun. The most sensitive part of the penis, especially in circumcised penises, is gonna be the frenulum, which is the spot right under the head or the glands of the penis. So that is where a lot of the nerve endings are concentrated and can be actually a little bit overwhelming if you put too much attention on it. So check in with your partner always and just, how does this feel? Do you want something different? Do you like it when I do this? At some point, take one of my hand job classes. I am obsessed with hand jobs and <laughs> it's so much fun to, to have a new and interesting way to, to please your partner. But suffice to say, the frenulum is a place you want to spend some time. Also, um, the the head is kind of ringed by this coronal ridge, which is another very sensitive area, sliding your fingers over it, lubed, lubed fingers. Anytime you're touching genitals, you're gonna wanna have lube on your hands. Sliding it over the coronal ridge can feel really fantastic. And then of course, down the length of the shaft. The balls are also not to be neglected uh, unless you have a partner who is strongly anti having their balls touch, some do. Always communicate that in advance, but if you happen to mention like, hey, I saw on this webinar that uh, playing with your balls can feel really good. Are you up for that? You might be surprised that they say yes. A little Valentine's Day treat. <laughs> little Valentine's Day treat. You just, you just <laughs> never know. And so keep in mind that the skin of the, uh, the balls is very similar to the skin of the outer labia. So that's, that kind of skin might like being, you know, tugged gently, gently, gently <laughs> and stroked and caressed and you know maybe sort of tickled a little bit so check in with your partner see what they like unfortunately genital topicals are not as effective for penises because they don't have the same exposed mucosal membranes that vulvas do so it doesn't get in as well but i have heard from some people with penises that they actually really like getting a hand job with some weed lube just be aware that if you are putting an infused oil on genitals and then putting your mouth on genitals, the genitals are now an edible. <laughs> <laughs> so be really thoughtful about your dosing. Also an area that gets neglected a lot is the perineum, also known as the taint. This uh, allows you to actually indirectly stimulate the prostate from outside of the body without having to go up the butt to do it. So if you have a partner who's curious about prostate play, but maybe not quite ready for an internal massage, the perineum is a great place to start. All right. Be sure to put in the Q&A if you have questions about anatomy. I mentioned this a little bit ago, but just to go into it a little bit more, the reason that cannabis topicals are so helpful for vulvas is because THC itself is a vasodilator. So it expands the blood vessels and capillaries. More blood, increased sensation, feels really great. It also helps to reduce discomfort. Um, I personally am a sexual trauma survivor and I had pain with penetration for my entire adult life until I found THC infused oil. And using that prior to sexy fun times allowed me to have penetration without pain for the first time. And that was a game changer. That is why I am the canisexual. It's why I'm so passionate about sharing this information because that is something that no one should have to deal with to have pain with penetration. And so if you can use a product that will help alleviate that pain and make sex more pleasurable for you, that feels like such a big win. CBD, as I mentioned, also has anti-inflammatory properties. So pairing them together can be really great as well for helping with discomfort. 
20 minutes before, think of it as a pussy marinade. And <laughs> you can also put some on afterwards as sort of a, a balm to help soothe maybe slightly sore or, or swollen tissue and, and help bring you back down to earth, especially if you were going at it for a while. It, it'll help prep you for round two or the next day or just leave you feeling more comfortable, which I think is a win for everyone. Things that impact arousal that you should really know about. Are you enjoying the sex that you're having? If you don't anticipate enjoying the sex, you're probably not going to prioritize it. And so we get very caught up in high desire, low desire, high libido, low libido. But I have found and, and a lot of sex researchers have found that low libido often does not exist in a vacuum. And a lot of the time it is actually in response to unsatisfying sex in some capacity or some sort of feeling of not completely trusting your partner or not totally totally able totally being able to be present and let go so i think it's really really useful to be inquiring with yourself am i actually enjoying the sex that i'm having if i'm really really honest with myself or is there something that's really not working for me that i'm afraid to talk about so be aware of that. And I find that consuming some cannabis can actually help both make you more self-aware and, and help you slow down enough to kind of sit with yourself and, and feel into what's true for you. And also to share that information with your partner who hopefully is really receptive to hearing any concerns or feedback that you might have about what's not working for you, as well as what is working for you. Of course, you want to share both. But you want to be able to have like real talk around that. Don't don't be performative in your lovemaking. Don't do it because the other person wants to. Like do it because you really and truly enjoy it. And hopefully cannabis can help with that enjoyment. Spontaneous versus responsive desire are things that I think people really, really need to be aware of. Spontaneous desire is the one that we see most often represented in popular media. It's like, oh, there's a cute person. I want to have sex with them right now. I'm just going to like rip my clothes off and jump into the bed. That is that is spontaneous desire. <laughs> that is not the type of desire that most people experience, despite it being sort of the dominant narrative in media. A lot of people experience what's called responsive desire, which is desire in response to context. What it, what the hell does that mean? It means that sometimes you don't know how much you're enjoying something until you've already started doing things that you enjoy. So that can look like very slow kissing and then a massage. And, and as you're doing these like gentle, slow touches and explorations, your brain goes, oh, well, we kind of like this. This is nice. And then you do something else that feels nice. It's not directly going straight to the genitals. Oh, well, this kind of feels nice too. And so you're stacking like positive associations on top of positive associations and 10 or 15 minutes in, all of a sudden your brain goes, oh, I think I would like the sex now. And you're off to the races. But when partners get over eager and they want to just dive straight into, especially penetration, without having time to really let their partner get in the mood, that is something that can make sex less enjoyable. Mm -hmm. So be aware of responsive versus spontaneous desire and use cannabis to help get you into a sexy context. What does that look like? Well, what gets in the way of, of having sexy fun times? Pain, stress, sadness, not being able to really be present in your body, being kind of in your head and, and focused on other things. And so cannabis can help bring you more to the center and get you more grounded so that you can access your arousal. Um, the dual control model, which is like a very awesome thing to be aware of, and I don't have time to get into it really, go to Amazon and buy Come As You Are by Dr. Emily Nagoski. She explains all of this in amazingly vivid detail, and it is a game-changing book if you either have a vulva or love someone who has a vulva. <laughs> It goes into all of this around spontaneous and responsive desire, the dual control model, which basically just means in your brain, there's a gas pedal and a brake pedal and pain and stress and being hungry and being tired, hit the brakes and things that your brain deems sexually relevant in some context hits the gas and you have to let the brakes off before you can hit the gas. That's, that's the dual control model in the shortest possible number of words. 
So if you're curious about that more, Come As You Are by Dr. Emily Nagoski is something that you really, really, really want to read. The other key takeaway from that book that has changed the game for me is that arousal is not always correlated with physiological response like erection or lubrication. So what that means is you can be really wet and not turned on. You could be really dry, but also really turned on. And you can be not hard, but really turned on or hard and not turned on. So don't use what you're seeing or feeling with the genitals as your benchmark check in with your partner ask them how they're actually feeling don't be like oh you must like this because you're wet i actually have clients who have had like unpleasant sexual experiences because they felt too ashamed to tell their partner yes i'm wet but i'm not actually into this so knowledge is power make sure that you're really tapping into your body and communicating with your partner throughout the experience especially if you're using any kind of intoxicating products um mm -hmm. like intoxicating cannabis products Okay, I want to set you up for success as much as possible. So really helpful questions to ask for you and your partner. Have a pre-talk. I think that more communication is better. In fact, I tend to over-communicate. That's, that's a thing that I do. So I call it an erotic huddle. <laughs> <laughs> I like to suggest actually sitting next to your partner rather than across from them because sitting next to each other kind of makes you feel like a team, whereas sitting across from each other can make you feel like adversaries. It's a really, really subtle thing, but see what happens and I promise you it will shift your dynamic just a smidge. So sit next to them sometime in advance of your planned sexy times, either an hour before, 10 minutes before, a day before, a week before, it doesn't matter, just before, before clothes come off and have some conversations about, do you want to be high? Because you don't have to be when you're using cannabis. You can use this can amazing cannabis infused oil on your genitals or use it for a massage or take a bath. And that, none of those things are gonna get you high, which is helpful. Um, if you do wanna be high, how high do you wanna be? What kinds of products are you planning to use? What time constraints do you have? Is this going to be a 15 minute quickie or is this like you have hours and hours and, and nothing to do except enjoy bedroom time? I like to schedule sex. Um, I am non-monogamous and I have a couple of different partners and each one has different time constraints based on their other obligations and commitments. So it's nice to know like I have from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. and let's, you know, have sex for an hour in there just so you can kind of be on the same page. It's helpful. Um, also talk about what typically gets in the way. Pain, mood, feeling disconnected from your body. This goes back to that whole gas and brakes conversation. So what hits the brakes and what has have you found tends to hit the gas for you? And how can cannabis help with either of those things? On the day of, as you are like moving into the bedroom space, before you consume, negotiate before you medicate. See, I told you I'd say it again. Talk about how you want to feel. How do you feel right now? How do you want to feel? And which cannabis products are you planning to use to get there? Um, it's nice to share maybe two or three things that you'd really like to explore together. You might say, hey, I would love to give you a hand job because I just learned some cool stuff from Ashley. Or I would really like to do some kissing and oral, but I don't think I'm up for penetration tonight. Whatever your boundaries and limits are, are valid and you don't have to justify them to anyone. However, you do need to share them with your partner because that's a real pertinent person to be aware of your needs. Um, you can also share, like I said, any activities that are off limits. And what is the general sort of energy level of the sex that you wanna be having with this person in this moment? Do you want it to be energetic and frenzied and like, oh my gosh, I'm ripping your clothes off? Or do you want it to be a lot more slow and sensual and just, tantric and energetic like there's so many ways to have sex in every conceivable fashion so have a sense of what you're really going for rituals uh i self-identify as a witch uh part of my activating your cosmic pussy sex magic class is actually doing sex magic and learning how to create ritual around intimacy both solo and partnered um, we're going to start with partnered and then we'll talk about solo in a second.
But since cannabis can really help you address the things that are getting in the way by getting you more embodied, you can play with that. You can, you can be in an embodied space and then create ritual from there with some mindfulness around sensuality. So set and setting make all of the difference for how you're going to have, what kind of experience you're going to have. Make sure that you have a tidy space to play in, that there's not laundry on the floor or, you know, three week old sheets. That's not necessarily a recipe for sexiness, unless you're <laughs> into that, in which case you do you, no, no, no judgment. Um, but maybe consider making it sort of a sacred space, light some candles, put on a playlist that you've curated, burn incense or diffuse essential oils so that it smells good. Um, I've recently been doing some really cool things with diffusing cannabis terpenes as a way to enhance the, the environment that I'm about to play in. So but different terpenes, terpenes are the things that make cannabis and other plants smell the way that they do. And like uh, essential oils, different scents have different effects. So do a little bit of Googling around terpenes and their effects, and then choose some, some essential oils that will give you those effects. It's a really fun way to just play on multiple levels. Also be sure to have plenty of water because cotton mouth is a thing. <laughs> and uh, light snacks in case of the munchies that are easy, like uh, strawberries or chocolate or um, you know maybe almonds, like little little finger food kinds of things that if you get snacky in the middle, you can just pause, get some water, get some snacks, and then right back to it. Feed each other, maybe. You Feed know. each other. That can be super sexy. Like kind of tease, like, okay, I'm gonna give it to you. Nope, not yet. Oh, can you smell? <laughs> can you smell that strawberry? Oh, it smells really good. Don't you like just want to feel it explode on your tongue? Okay, okay, now you can have it. Like so many fun things to do with that, especially when somebody has the munchies. Like <laughs> I'm telling you, life could be so much more awesome than you could have ever imagined. <laughs> Also set up your cannabis altar. Take care in laying out your consumption implements. Uh, one of my most prized possessions is this cute little pipe that has a an octopus on it that was blown by this amazing glass blower out in the desert. And I love having this as part of my cannabis ritual. So the process of picking up the flower, smelling the flower, grinding the flower, packing the bowl, having maybe the other person light the bowl for you Hmm. gazing into their eyes as you inhale and then exhale maybe into their mouth, shotgunning a hit. So much cool, amazing opportunity there. So, you know, don't be afraid to try things like that. And yes, somebody said in the comments, lay out your toys and lubes too. <laughs> Absolutely. Lay out your toys, like have everything kind of out so that you're not scrambling mid coitus. Uh, I also like to lay down a waterproof blanket because in case things get juicy or just in case like lube spills or fluids get places, you don't have to fight over the wet spot. <laughs> it's really like it's it's an investment in your pleasure to put some time and effort into planning, especially when you're using cannabis and really just create a ritual based on how you want to feel. Do you want to feel worshipped like a god or goddess? Do you want to feel silly and playful? Do you want to feel like your partner is using you for their pleasure? Some people think that's super hot. Do you want to be desired and just like feel your partner's just need for you? Create ritual around that. And that's going to look different for everybody. But like, give it a shot and see, see what comes up. Approach sex and cannabis with mindfulness and intention, especially in partnered space. Um, again, negotiate before you medicate. Somebody should really be counting how many times I say that in this hour. I think it's three. <laughs> <laughs> three? Okay. Um, and continue to check in throughout the experience because what was yummy and awesome five minutes ago might now actually be like uncomfortable or overstimulated. So what's what are you feeling in your body? What do you notice? What would make it feel even better? Is this working for you? Those kinds of questions are really useful. Don't just le limit it to like, are you okay? Because that can feel like, what makes you think I'm not okay? <laughs> but like have those conversations and especially work out nonverbal cues. Because sometimes if you've ever gotten really high and sort of lost your words, that can happen. And so sharing with your partner 
nonverbal ways to know that like maybe you're struggling a little bit or not having a good time, like like tapping out or um, holding something and then dropping it or I don't know, making the thumbs up or thumbs down sign, like some kind of nonverbal way to communicate like, hey, this is where I'm at and have as part of your pre-talk, how do you want to be taken care of if you happen to find yourself having like a not ideal reaction to what's going on or even to just what you took? I've certainly had moments where I smoked something that I thought was going to work really great for me and ended up putting me in a more anxious space. Mm. So how do I want my partner to show up for me in those moments? How can they start to de-escalate that anxiety and help me get grounded? Um, what can they offer me to, you know, some water or maybe some CBD to try to kind of help calm me down? Those are all really useful conversations to have in advance. Yeah. Um, hydrate and have more water nearby and use lube. So much lube, so <laughs> much lube. Like, don't be afraid of using lube. It is not just for people who are older or postmenopausal or whatever you think the stereotype of who uses lube is. Lube is for everybody. I am 35 and I, ha I use lube every single time I have sex. In fact, I have a baby bottle warmer don't have kids. I have a baby bottle warmer next to my bed where I keep my lube so I can have it warmed up when I'm using it. Pro <laughs> tip. Pro, <laughs> pro tip. That is how bougie I am. <laughs> um, as I mentioned, waterproof blankets, uh, Liberator and Fux pads are two that are really great if you want to buy one or you can just use a towel. That's fine too. But share in real time, give feedback if you're getting in your head or if your foot's asleep or if you're having the time of your life. Let your partner know that it's going to set you up for really amazing, sexy, fun times. When it comes to cannabis and self-love, self-love is the most important relationship you will ever have. Mm -hmm. um, as Candace mentioned at the beginning, I studied uh, as a body sex facilitator with Betty Dodson, who is widely known as the mother of masturbation. Mm -hmm. And she taught me the value of of a really, really robust relationship with your own pleasure. Because how could you possibly tell your partner how to please you if you don't know how to please yourself? And how can you tell them where to go or what to do if you don't even know what your own genitals look like? Mm -hmm. And especially for those of us those of us with any genitals, with vulvas, you kind of need a mirror. You know, penises are just sort of out there flopping around. The vulva <laughs> is, is an entire like, beautiful cave of wonders, but it's all kind of tucked up in there. So take a hand mirror and a flashlight and really look at yourself and, and celebrate the wonders of your folds and, and know that whatever your vulva looks like, whether it's big or small or chubby or fuzzy or completely bald, or you have like beautiful petal like inner labia, or they're like kind of tucked neatly inside, whatever it looks like is awesome really and truly penises are great too but like vulvas i feel like really get so much shame associated with them so spend some time if, especially if you have a vulva just gazing at the wonders that are between your legs because they're pretty incredible there is a really big difference between just kind of rubbing one out and having a solo sex ritual there are times where i I'm a little bit stressed in the middle of the day and I just want to let off some steam and I will run into my bedroom, pull out my favorite vibrator, get myself off in less than two minutes. And it's just quick and dirty and I'm on to the next activity. That is what I call rubbing one out. There is nothing wrong with it, but there is a very distinct difference between that and having a solo sex practice where you are actually dedicating time and intentionality to exploring eroticism on all different levels in your body, not just genitally focused, but what happens if I touch my shoulder? Do I have sensitive spots on my neck? What about my chest or my nipples or, you know, your hips or your inner thighs, like really getting to know your body and, and honoring and celebrating and worshiping your body in this solo sex ritual. And cannabis can be really helpful in that because it reminds you to slow down and take your time and really explore all of the things that your body has to offer. Especially if you have body shame, cannabis I have found is a really great way to kind of <clears throat> get into a space of being able to reframe those limiting beliefs and those things that other people told you about your body. 
we do not come into this earth hating our bodies. That is something that society puts on us. And cannabis can be a great way to kind of make you slow down and really think about like, wait, whose who's voice is that in my head that's telling me my pussy is ugly? Who is, whose voice is that in my head that tells that's telling me my stomach is too flabby or my, my breasts sag or my ass isn't firm enough? That's not my voice. That's, that's somebody else's voice. Do I want to listen to that voice? And you can really kind of intentionally weed your, your mental garden and then plant the seeds of, of the beliefs that actually serve you. Love that. Thank you. Yeah. Seduce yourself. You deserve it. Couple of cautionary notes. Don't expect certain strains to be the best. I cannot tell you how many journalists have reached out to me and said, what's the best strain for sex? And I'm like, that is the wrong question for so many reasons. <laughs> not least of which, what works for me today is not necessarily going to work for you tomorrow. It's not necessarily going to work for me tomorrow. It really depends. And you really can't go by strain names because there's so much variety from grower to grower. Now, if you know that uh, Lilac Diesel from Glasshouse Farms is your like happy, feel good, everything is awesome, great, sexy time strain, then keep getting that one from that grower. <laughs> That's going to be reliable. They're not going to like change up the genetics on you randomly. But if you're like, oh, I like Blue Dream. Well, heck, the Blue Dream from this dispensary is going to be different than the Blue Dream from that dispensary is going to be different state to state. And, mm -hmm. and there are some dispensaries, not ones like pharmacy that are awesome, but ones that are maybe a little bit less reputable that will slap any given strain on a flower mm -hmm. and be like, this is what this is, because this is a really popular selling strain name. So you got to really, really be a savvy consumer and go to amazing, thoughtful, reputable places like pharmacy, where you know that you're going to get what they're telling you you're getting. Don't overconsume. I cannot overstate this enough. Less is more. You do not need to be obliterated out of your mind to have sex. <laughs> Just, in fact, if you have to be obliterated out of your mind to have sex, that may be like a little indicator light on your dashboard that something else is going on. You want to consume just enough to get you feeling sexy and aroused and enhance some sensation without getting to the point where you're about to stare at the refrigerator for five hours. Find, find your zone and know what that looks like for you. Also realize that different products are going to do different things. So again, try it in advance. Masturbate. I don't like to use date nights with partners as a place to field test new strains and products. I like to do that homework sort of in advance so that I have a pretty clear picture of what it's going to look like, at least generally, when I go to have sexy times with a partner. Uh, do not expect consistent results with edibles. They are super contextual for all the reasons I mentioned earlier. And be aware of uh, flower and vape companies, especially that promise really specific results. I have seen a couple of, of companies do marketing around like, this is an arousal vaporizer. It's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> arousal does not exist in a vacuum. There is not a magic pill. Even Viagra is nothing more than a vasodilator. It doesn't make you corny. It just makes you hard. So just be very skeptical of someone who claims that this is like an aphrodisiac or this is going to get you in the mood. Like it might help you address the things that are getting in the way and that will lead to you getting in the mood, but the cannabis itself is not turning you on just to be clear. <laughs> um, so we're going to talk a little bit about products before we start to wrap and, and please now is a great time to start submitting your questions for the Q and a portion. But as I mentioned, the uh, Quim Night Moves Intimate Oil is fantastic. I just got a hold of this on Sunday. I tried it out Sunday night and then again on Monday because I liked it that much. And it's really lovely how much it brings blood flow to the area. It helps my clit be a multi-trick pony as opposed to a one or two trick pony. And it smells really nice. And I, I trust them to have created like a product that is thoughtful about vaginal and, and vulvar health. So Quim is fantastic. Uh, I was also lucky enough to be gifted some forbidden flowers flower, 
Uh, this particular one is called Midnight Thornberry and it smells so good. And I've really been loving it as an evening strain to help relax. I could totally see this as like a cuddle and make out strain for me. But again, your mileage may vary. So try a little bit. You know, I took a tiny little bit of a bud, crumbled it into my pipe and, and smoked it and just like sat. I was like, okay, what do I notice? What does my body feel like? What's going on in my head? Where do I feel the, the high? And then I wrote it down and that made a huge difference. Um, there is a CBD product from Playboy um, that is really cool if you like intense sensation. It has uh, niacin in it as one of the ingredients, which is safe for vulvas. For most people, some people have like a strong reaction to niacin, so be aware of that. But um, niacin, if you've ever taken it as, as a vitamin supplement, uh, it's, it's one of the B vitamins, it causes a flush. So much like THC, it's a vasodilator and it makes it feel hot. Not like mm -hmm. burny hot, but like, whew, that is, that will get your attention. So if you really like intense sensations, the Playboy CBD um, arousal oil may be a great choice for you. If you're someone who's like, oh, that sounds a little bit too much for me, might want to skip that one. Um, I mentioned suppositories earlier. One of the suppositories that pharmacy carries that I really, really like is the Hello Again suppositories. Those were actually designed for people who are postmenopausal to have uh, daytime and nighttime support for hot flashes, for dryness, but anyone can use them. Mm -hmm. and, and they can be used anally or vaginally. So much like sex toys, once you own them, you can fuck them however you want. Once you have a cannabis product, you can use it however it most suits you. So, you know, use your imagination, go wild. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that is most of what I have. What questions are coming in, Candice? Yeah. Thank you again, first of all, Ashley. This has been such an educational presentation and you always make it so fun. Um, thank you. I just, I really, I really appreciate working with you. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and ask a couple questions. Um, so somebody's asking about THCV and they've actually never heard of it. Um, so they're asking like, where can you find it? And I would say um, a lot of dispensaries nowadays will have products with THCV. Um, I mean, it's a naturally occurring compound in the cannabis plant, so it'll be available like in, in, in smaller levels. Um, but can you talk to that at all? Absolutely. Um, I was lucky enough to be at the Emerald Cup in December. I was I had the privilege of speaking there, and I ran into a brand called Farm Cut Cannabis, and they have the highest THCV flower. It was, I believe it was like 8% THCV, and the, wow. the strain was Pink Boost Goddess. Nice. Um, so there are specific cultivars that have higher percentages of THCV. And if you're curious, just talk to the bud tender and hopefully they will know. Or if, if you're not really sure, like do some Googling. Uh, Durban poison is another one that tends to have higher levels of THCV. So just, you know, go to Leafly, check out like THCV flower, and it should give you some at least places to start. Very good. And I feel like this is going to be one of the emerging minor cannabinoids as people Definitely. find out more about it. I think the companies are going to find out how to uh, make it available in higher quantities and, and make it more available. So definitely look out for more and more products that have that. Yeah. Um, somebody saying THC is a bioidentical hormone to progesterone. So how does this affect the body scientifically? So... I am not a nurse or a doctor and I don't play one on TV. Uh, I would <laughs> defer to uh, my colleague, Dr. Jordan Tischler, who runs um, Inhale MD. He has a website, inhalemd.com. Check that out. He probably has that uh, explanation there. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good question. That's not one that I'd actually ever been asked in the past as well. So yeah, you know, there's lots of questions that we get, mm -hmm. you know, that we can't give an answer. And so we always just defer to the experts. So Absolutely. Um, definitely check that out. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your classes and how people can find out about them and how um, we can sign up and follow you? Yes, absolutely I can. So I have a couple of really cool offerings coming up, including one this Saturday, the 12th at 5 p.m. And that one's called Cosmic Couples. I'm actually teaching it with my boyfriend, Ben. And so we are going to be 
taking a couple's perspective to intimacy. And so you'll get to hear my perspective as a woman, his perspective as a man, and our experience in the almost seven years we've been together in exploring intimacy in a myriad of different ways and how using cannabis and how having like really honest and open conversations and how bringing ritual and sacredness into our lovemaking has made such an incredible difference in our lives. So we'll be sharing all of those juicy secrets and you can actually still register for that. We have some tickets available still uh, at cosmic-couples.com. Um, and those tickets are $44 per couple and it will be recorded and available to view afterwards if you can't watch it live. I also have another uh, class coming up for women on the 22nd. So it's 2 22 And I'm calling it the Cosmic Pussy Portal Workshop. Um, my Activating Your Cosmic Pussy work uh, program intensive for women is seven weeks. And not everyone can commit to that. And it's a little bit of a higher price point. So I wanted to make something that was shorter and a lower price point. So this is just $22. Mm. And it's 90 minutes of me talking about sex magic and loving your pussy and solo sex practices and using your pleasure and orgasms for manifesting. And it's going to be super powerful because of the date, the 222.22 portal. It's a great place to really dive in. And you can register for that at highpriestessofpleasure.com. Love it. I love that. That sounds so cool. Um, we were just about to wrap, but I had somebody that just sent another question. So we'll, yes. I'll ask you one last question. Sure. Um, somebody is saying that they had a hysterectomy and most of the times that they have light bleeding during sex. Mm -hmm. What would be helpful for um, the sensitivity? Would you suggest like a lube? I would. I would suggest both a lube and potentially a suppository. Um, assuming that that's like, oh, like check with your gynecologist, make sure that that's okay. Especially if it's maybe a recent hysterectomy, like that you've healed enough, but if it's mm -hmm. just a thing that happens afterward, um, you know, bleeding during sex does happen. Sometimes I have a particularly sensitive cervix that likes to bleed when I knock it. So, you know, if, if you not, if you don't have any other pressing concerns and your doctor has been like, yep, it's fine. That's going to happen. Then yeah, absolutely. Just use some suppositories or topicals. That's a great point. Thank you. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for sharing your time with us today. And this has been so insightful, so enjoyable, so eye opening. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed it as much as I did. I love absolutely love working with you. Um, so thank you so much, Ashley, for being with us today. Thank you for having me. And thank you all for coming. Yeah. I hope that you all were able to learn something today that will help you become better informed cannabis consumers and that the information that we provided will help you find relief until the next time. Stay well um, and stay healthy. Thank you all.